What is up, guys? It's John with pptactical.com, and I am still quarantined. Nothing has changed. I have no idea what day it is, nor how long I've been doing this, because time is a flat circle, and it's also a lie. Time is a lie. It's not real. And disoriented though I may be, I still have trouble believing that this photo of a woman who looks like she would gleefully call the police on you for playing music after 7 p.m., screaming for death in a glorious revolution in front of a Baskin Robbins, is real. But also, of course, it's real, because every day gets dumber and dumber, and parody is dead. No, Karen, it's actually not called martial law or tyranny when you're not allowed to go to the Cheesecake Factory. Every day gets fucking stupider. Do you ever just feel like you have aged like three millennia in a week? This shit is disorienting, though, uh, and if you're at all like me, maybe you've had some trouble setting any kind of schedule uh, or giving yourself any kind of structure. I'm not generally a super structured person to begin with, and this weird, formless day-to-day -day living uh, can be a little bit hard, so recent projects, outside of all of the other stuff I've already shown you guys, like personal stuff for me has been trying to set and adhere to a schedule, um, waking up at the same time, setting aside some time to get some exercise done, getting some work done, and then, you know, having like a hard separation between work and home life, otherwise everything just bleeds into itself. Not that this is a revolutionary concept whatsoever, there's already been a ton of people that have said it, but if I am somehow, for some godforsaken reason, your only connection to the outside world right now, please do yourself a favor if you're also struggling with that and try to adhere to some sort of schedule or structure. I promise it helps. Alternatively, if this entire thing has you too far blackpilled to ever consider being productive again, feel free to continue day drinking and watching your neighbor's cats nap. So this is going to be another video where I just run you through a couple of different things that I've been playing with to occupy the time, stuff that's been sent to us, etc. Again, they're not full reviews. Um, I'm limited by the settings and what I can really play around with uh, in the confines of my own apartment, so uh, take it for what it is, but let's get into it. First and foremost, and probably the thing that I've been actively playing with the most, is the Mantis X. So we have done a full review on the Mantis X previously, so I'm not really going to go too far into the weeds with it this time around. However, in the lead up to the now cancelled, officially, California Tactical Games event, one of the areas that I know that I needed work on personally uh, were handgun skills. I was actually slated to take a class with a local training group, but that fell through for obvious reasons. However, it's still an area that I know that I need to work on, so the Mantis X uh, has been helping with that. Essentially, it's a device that attaches to the bottom rail on your handgun and is going to give you all sorts of feedback about uh, what you're actually doing uh, when the trigger breaks. Obviously, because you don't have that point of contact being stock like you would on a rifle, it's a lot easier to do wacky stuff with uh, handguns that'll wind up pulling you off target, like flinching or anticipating recoil, uh, white knuckling, etc. The Mantis X is going to give you feedback on all of the minute little muzzle movements that you might be inducing that you're probably not even aware of. And upon breaking the trigger, it gives you a score to kind of give you a ballpark range of uh, how good that trigger pull was. The device actually pairs with an app on your phone that's super easy to uh, link up, just uses Bluetooth, and get started. From there, it's going to run you through an introduction and then some benchmark tests to kind of figure out where you are as a shooter and give you some feedback right off the bat. The model that I've got here is the X10 Elite, and it's their newest model. In addition to being able to perform both on pistols and rifles, uh, live fire, drive fire, uh, it'll also work with uh, shotguns and archery as well um, if you're a bow shooter. In addition to just having a boatload of features on the newer models, uh, they're also a lot smaller than uh, some of the previous Mantis X offerings, which is great uh, because that means that they will fit in a wider range of holsters uh, than the previous models as well, which is great because there are a lot of drills in the app that involve drawing from your holster and detecting your trigger pull from there. In my last video about this belt kit, I had mentioned plans to replace the DSG holster that was on there with a Safari Land, and I've done that, and as you can see, it actually fits in there perfect. The Safari Land that I've got is actually oversized. It's for uh, an M3, I believe, so it'll fit a ton of stuff that's smaller than that, but it's nice knowing that I don't have to worry about it. Additionally, due to the quarantine itself, Mantis X has actually made the advanced marksmanship portion of the app, which was previously paywalled, 
uh, free for the moment. And you do need to complete the basic marksmanship course to even have access to it. But it's dope that a company uh, with a product kind of built exactly for this kind of situation is being responsive and offering up stuff uh, rather than trying to take people for a ride and milk them for more money. So if you, like me, are a little bit flustered with the inability to get out to the range and work on some areas that might need improvement in your own personal toolbox of skills, for sure take a look at Manisex if you haven't yet. Um, by far one of the most useful tools for training in the comfort of your very own home prison. Last up on the quick overview chopping block for today is a pretty cool little adaptable plate carrier from HRT. This is the HRT Rack. This is another one of those items where I'm going to stay a little bit brief and kind of give you more first impressions than an actual review review, as obviously I haven't had the time to really run this thing and develop any sort of solid opinions about it. First impressions uh, are pretty cool, though. There are a lot of cool things going on with this rig that I haven't really seen in a lot of other plate carriers, and I'll explain. As you may have guessed, it utilizes swift clips to accept different placards or chest rigs on the front of the plate carrier itself. Now, compared to some brands that I've seen recently that are putting out swift clip style rigs, uh, meaning that they still do utilize Fastex buckles, but they're not the correct spacing apart from one another to be able to uh, slap onto a plate carrier that utilizes that setup as well, the HRT does, and other swift clip rigs, uh, like my Spiritus Microfight, uh, will attach right on there. I also like the fact that they're using a buckle uh, that has two anchor points on the webbing itself, both top and bottom. Uh, and it's got a flat back as well, which if you saw my video on my advanced slickster, I was bitching about the angle that the clips sit at. This mitigates the entire thing. It's a flat back, two anchor points, and that makes sure that they aren't going to sit at any kind of weird angle. The placard itself is pretty standard. It's got an insert in it, uh, standard elastic webbing with Velcro, um, very similar to a lot of other brands that are out there right now, but it does its job just fine. Uh, giving you three AR mags, and then it's also got these sewn-in uh, additional pistol mags that utilize a Kydex setup, kind of similar to that seen on the Kaiwi, um, giving you two pistol mags on either side of the placard itself. Additionally, you've got two GP pouches sewn onto the entire placard. This is not removable, uh, and opening those will give you access to a little bit of Velcro and some elastic webbing. Uh, what you put in there is going to be up to you, but things like medical supplies or snacks or small tools, uh, right at home. And there's actually a good amount of stuff going on on the backside of this rig as well. We've got a variety of pouches and they are secured via a pretty cool zipper system. That zipper system is going to allow you to attach different assault panels, uh, different pouch suites. Uh, right now I've got it set up with what I believe uh, is HRT's uh, medical equipment panel and then you've got a more general sort of just open admin GP type setup back here. Overall, I'm a little bit of a sucker for modularity, so it's pretty cool to see the system with the zip-on panels, uh, allowing you to swap stuff out on the fly, rather than dealing with the pain of weaving molly webbing, uh, especially those really long nylon tabs uh, through the webbing that you would have on the rear plate bag. It's not the end of the world, it's just kind of obnoxious, kind of tears your fingers up a little bit, but the shoulder pads are nice and thick and full of a, a really dense foam, which is nice. I think I mentioned in the Slickster video that I had actually stolen these and thrown them on that rig um, just because those straps are a little bit thin, um, but they're super comfy. And in addition, it's got this cutie release as well in case you need to get the rig off as fast as possible for whatever reason. The interior of the plate bags sort of have this pontoon design as well. Uh, I believe it's just a tiny bit of foam that's sewn into the face of the plate bag that actually sits against your body itself, and that's going to give you uh, airway channels to help cool um, if you're wearing it for long periods of time. It's just a pretty cool design. You can also swap out cummerbunds if you're inclined to do that. Right now, I've just got the sort of slimline, real simple one on there, um, and it basically Velcros to the front plate bag, and then the rear plate bag is where all of your adjustment is. There's a thicker Molly cummerbund available as well, though after all of this time spent running elastic cummerbunds on a little bit slimmer plate carriers, I'm not positive I could go back to something like that. I will say though that there are at least a few places where I've noticed that the stitching seems a little bit subpar, or at the very least, um, a bit messy. Though obviously, as I haven't had the chance to really run this thing into the ground quite yet, it's unclear how big of an impact that stitching is going to have on the quality of the rig overall, or if it's going to hold up in the long term. Which again, 
overview, not review. Overall, there are some really neat things going on with the HRT rack. Uh, there are a few things that seem a little bit clunky, but they're a relatively new manufacturer, and I'm sure those things are probably going to be ironed out sometime down the road. If you are in the market, however, for an adaptable plate carrier that can do a lot of different things, and probably at a lower price point than a lot of the other competitors on the market right now, I would say for sure check out HRT. That's going to do it for our brief overview of stuff today. Thank you guys uh, so much for watching, as always. I did want to take a real quick moment to plug the Silly Gun Meme shirts that we had made. They are available now, and if you've ever wanted to own a t-shirt emblazoned with a fidget spinner that has uh, the Constitution and a Punisher skull on it, now's your chance. Once again, my name is John with PewPew Pew Tactical, and if I find out that any of you are out there spreading disease because you're angry that you can't get your sliders at Applebee's, I'll ban you and there will be no next time. Damn it. <laughs>